Community Time. Assalamu alaikum adab and welcome to Community Time. On today's program, we will be exploring Hajj. What is Hajj and what it actually involves. Now to discuss the Hajj and to talk about the health aspects, we are very fortunate to be joined on Community Time by an expert, Professor Rashid Gatrad, consultant paediatrician. Then after the break, we will be joined by Mohammed Tariq, Senior Trading Standards Enforcement Officer, to talk about making the travel arrangements and avoiding the pitfalls. Every Muslim is expected to make a journey to Hajj pilgrimage to Mecca and Medina in Saudi Arabia during once in a lifetime. Around 50,000 British Muslims make the Hajj every year. Many save for years and years to make it this dream once of a lifetime to come true. Normally, more than 80% of travellers are aged over 65. To talk about having a healthy Hajj, we are very fortunate to be joined by Professor Rashid Gatrad, consultant paediatrician and also um, a lecturer at University of Kentucky in the United States and um, as such a much Sorry, and as much as published author on this project and subject. Now, first of all, welcome, um, Professor Gatrad, and thank you very much for coming on to Community Time. Thank you very much for inviting me. And thank you. Now, um, Professor Saab, tell us a bit about yourself, a bit of background. Um, I was born in Malawi and went to school in Zimbabwe and uh, then went to Harrow and then was uh, educated in medicine at the University of Leeds. Now I'm, now I'm a professor of paediatrics uh, at the University of Kentucky and also hold a chair at the University of Wolverhampton and a consultant paediatrician, which is a child specialist. And I, my job basically is to deal with children that are ill from any disease and also newborn babies. Mm -hmm. So I have looked after those as well. Now, Professor, you've actually published um, an article uh, in the BMJ um, mm. as well and about Hajj and yes. um, about people who travel abroad. And it's very nice, it's very brief, and anybody can understand it. And we'll talk around about that, what people um, will, what we expect people to do, basically, to have mm. a healthy Hajj, basically. Mm. Mm. Now, on community time, well, community time is actually watched by a very diverse audience. Now, can you explain um, briefly from a medical aspect, mm. as in what is Hajj and why is it important and what does it involve? Well, I think if you look at it from a religious aspect, uh, Hajj is basically a uh, pilgrimage of sacrifice. As you said rightly, it is uh, incumbent on every Muslim to do this once in a year, as long as that person is healthy. Because if you are not healthy, A, you might become ill there, mm -hmm. because remember, you know, all of the deaths that occur there, 40% of them are because of heart disease. And a lot of the Asian people certainly have got heart disease, diabetes, blood pressure trouble, kidney trouble. So in that sense, I think it's important for you to be very healthy to get there. So it is a, a, a pilgrimage of sacrifice. It lasts for about five days. Uh, at, at, uh, the actual ritual lasts for five days. But people are there for about two to three weeks. And therefore, b because you're mingling with a lot of people, mm -hmm. you need to be prepared for all aspects of, of, of what you might meet. The preparation, you know, spiritual preparation is always there. But medical preparation, I don't think, is adequate. So something that I feel very strongly about is that you should really and truly be physically fit to be able to do it. Because 65, 70-year-old ladies and gentlemen that ha go for Hajj, they are not prepared physically. And it is a physical challenge when you go there. You're walking for miles, you're walking in heat, you're walking, walking sometimes where water is not immediately available. So I think from that point of view, you've got to be physically fit. Mm. The next thing you need to do is you need to go and make sure that you are, your doctor checks you out to make sure you're fit to go as well. Some women go there to, to, to see a GP, for example, to sort their periods out. Because it's, it's a good thing not to have periods whilst you're you there. And the, and the GPs might give you appropriate medication to do that. If you go and have got some sort of an illness, then you could probably, if your GP agrees, get a letter from him. But most importantly, 
you have to make sure that you're protected against various illnesses and this is where the vaccinations and immunizations come in absolutely now let's talk a bit about this healthy hajj and the preparations mm. um, and how can people actually start preparing for that okay we've got the spiritual preparations as mm, you've said mm. now let's start off with the first step the vaccinations which you've yeah mentioned. absolutely now what type of vaccinations are needed why and when because mm. normally in a general practice we tend to see four of weeks course. five weeks you need mm. to come in but people tend to leave it probably to, to pretty the last late minute. yeah yeah and what if there are any side effects that is if there are side effects yeah sure uh, what we, do we need to be mindful of okay the man the, the one vaccine that is mandatory is the meningitis vaccine Although they call it the meningitis vaccine, it's, it can actually kill you before you actually get the meningitis because you get a condition called meningococcemia. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, there are now two types of vaccines. One is a new one, which we call Menveo, and that's the only one available in this country. And that's a new conjugated one. The importance of that is that when you come back from Hajj, you are, you are not carrying the bacteria that, is, that kills you if, if other people get it. Let me give you an example. If you get, if, you, if the 10 people go from here to Hajj, probably one of us is carrying it, which is, which is a common thing in the UK. But when you come back, 8 out of 10 are carrying it. And this particular vaccine can protect you from that carriage, so your loved ones are protected. It is longer acting compared to the, the older one. Older one is pretty good as well. Mm -hmm. And this new vaccine, you can give it to much younger people from the age of two months it's recommended by the uh, joint, uh, joint Committee on Vaccinations and Immunizations. And it's, and it's safe. You, came, you talked about side effects. Anything you stick in the body will have a side effect. You know, uh, when children are at the age of two or three, four months, they get the five vaccines all in one go in an injection, including polio, which is very important when you go to mass events such as this. So children take it very well. There's no reason why we can't. There may be local actions. There might be an induration or, or a little bit of a pain at the site of the injection. And you might get a bit of a fever. You might get a bit of a flu-like illness. But generally speaking, most of these vaccines are fine. But that is mandatory. Polio, very important. But in this country, in the UK, we get it at birth, so we are covered. But that's mandatory for anybody over the sorry, less than 15 years old. And then you've got the other recommended ones. Mm. Those are the hepatitis A, hepatitis B, which, which can affect you. Uh, then there is a typhoid, which you can get from water and toilet, uh, if, if the hygienic conditions are not that great. And then there is a big one, which is the flu vaccine, which mm. I think is very important, particularly over the age of 65. And in this country, you can get it free anyway. But a lot of people don't seem to think that it's, it's compulsory to have the flu vaccine. Why, why have the flu no, vaccine? No, it's not compulsory, uh, but you see flu and this meningitis go together. If, you're, if your resistance is down, then chances are you'll get the meningitis. Mm. You see, in the year 2000, we had a hell of an outbreak yeah. of a lot of people that came from Hajj. And it was as a result of that, and as a result of the fact that the chief medical officer himself realized that this was such a big health hazard, and a lot of people died. In fact, in the UK, about 45 people died. So it is important to have that. But you see, it's not only these vaccines that are important. There's a fact that uh, you might be traveling on to somewhere else. You might be going to India or Africa or wherever, and you have to take protection against malaria. You might have to take malaria tablets. So it's important to discuss your itinerary before you go so that your GP is aware. Mm. Let's say, like, um, if I wanted to go to Hajj hmm. um, and can I actually have it a week before or two weeks before or does there have to be a certain it, It's a good point, weeks? yeah. It must be at least 10 days. This is the meningitis vaccine. Mm -hmm. But you can't have all the vaccines if you, if you were going to have them at right. the same time because they, might, they will make you poorly. So it's better to, better to space them out, shall we say a month or so from, from the time you're going. But the meningitis certificate for which you, you can, it's the only way you can get a visa to go to Saudi Arabia is if you've got the meningitis mm -hmm. certificate. Uh, that you must have at least 10 days before, otherwise it doesn't protect you. Mm. That's, that's absolutely and you see, if, you, if, you, if you're over in Hajj, you, you know, that so many people, you know, you talk about 3 million people, they're from different parts of the world carrying different bacteria, and you're bound to catch something. And almost always, you know, I always say, that if you come back from Hajj and have not got a cough, you've not been for Hajj. 
Mm. Really, you know, everybody gets a cough. And we're definitely going to come back to the cough. Let's have a look at a slide. Yep, um, sure. Incidence and impact at the very first slide. It's something that Professor Saab has very kindly um, put together just for our audience. Um, uh, and it's about incidence and impact of travel related diseases yeah. um, that the viewers can see. Yeah. You see, if you look out on the left hand side, uh, you can see where yellow fever is. Yellow fever is a devastating illness. Mm -hmm. But the incidence of it isn't that great. If you look at influenza at the right corner, then there's a high incidence, but the impact on killing you is not that great. But then if you look at the right top, which, which is really blue in color, mm -hmm. the impact of meningitis is high, high. Oh. and the incidence of killing you is also quite high. Right. So this is just an example of how nasty this particular problem is. Mm. You can get other problems as well, you know, tuberculosis, you know, mm. is again okay. something that you might have whilst you're there. But the biggest so not, killer we're looking biggest at. Biggest killer when you hear, yeah, this is something that you can protect yourself against. So I don't, even religiously speaking, I think you should protect yourself so that you don't fall ill, you have a good pilgrimage, you have a good experience. If you carry bugs that make other people ill, that can't be right even religiously because they won't be able to perform their hajj properly. Mm, that's right. And it's like you're not just going there to sort of like you might have an illness, but you're spreading it all out basically. And Absolutely. It's, yeah. it's about helping others. Everybody has. Absolutely. And I mean, a lot of people take take many. You mentioned what preparation you need to need, what sort of things you need to take uh, uh, before you go. You know, the usual things like analgesics to painkillers and you take plasters and all sorts of little things. In a little pack, in a little, in a little pack, pack, yeah. Okay. First aid kit, yeah, for diarrhea you take something. But importantly, over there, water is something you must carry all the time. Okay. And interestingly, something very simple is petroleum jelly. Oh, but yeah, that you see we walk so much, there's dust there, uh, there's sand there, and your groins get very chafed. So from that point of view, putting Vaseline in the groins particularly make sure that you don't get fungal infections and things like that. Diabetics, feet, I've known one or two diabetics come back and have an amputation because they got infections. Infections in diabetic feet is bad news. Now remember you might be walking barefoot many a time, you might stamp on something or somebody might stamp on you because there are millions of people there. So, what kind so you've got to look after your feet. So what kind of measures, is it the petroleum jelly that they put on or what kind of measures do they need to do with their feet in order to prevent that? Oh, no, petroleum jelly is basically for the groin area okay. so that uh, you don't get uh, a lot of infection there. And uh, it, it can prevent you from walking, you know, it will be painful. But as far as the feet are concerned, you make sure that you have your slippers on because most people in fact have, have uh, you don't have the normal slippers there, you have the flip-flops and all the colors of flip-flops are either blue or black mm -hmm. and if you don't want yours to get lost you have them pink or something so that nobody else sort of has those you know and i had them pink when i went there last time last year so i think you know you must have those all the time right. and 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 water is very important keeping to some sort of a r routine and regime is important i mean diabetic people certainly i mean this program goes around the world people might be crossing time zones they have to know you know about regime of insulins uh, if, you, if you are within four hours of time zone, for example, you don't need to change the insulin regime. regime. When you go over there, the storage of it away from sunlight, putting it into a fridge, all these things are very small points, but very relevant. Mm. Now, the other preparations, I mean, we talked about going there, but if you just slightly move it back before going to Hajj, do I need to do some sort of like um, walking around if I'm a heart patient? Because there's a lot of walking around the Kaaba. Sure, sure, sure. So what kind of things can, can, can anybody do or any chronic disease sufferer? By chronic disease we're talking about sure, asthma, sure, sure. we're talking mm. about heart disease. I think if, if you are prepared, phys if you're going for Hajj, for Hajj, whether you've got a heart problem or not, you are going to be walking unless somebody is going to take you down around in a wheelchair which mm. is possible and a lot of people might not want to do it in the wheelchair they would prefer yes. to walk this is this is Allah's home and you'd rather be walking rather than be taken around because that other person is having difficulty taking you around as well so you might as well physically fit walking a mile or two slowly building it up because you know when you do the rituals all around the four places that you go to you know, there is, you start in Mecca, then you go to Mina, then you go to, uh, go to Arafat, which is where your Hajj is accepted, then you come back to Muzdalifa, then you go to Mina, and then you go to Mecca again. So all this takes a long time, and remember, you're walking a lot of the time. 
Mm, yeah. Definitely. Now there is some transport there as well. Okay. And remember in Mina, where you've got uh, where you've got people where you've got the stoning uh, ritual, you can be easily trampled. And if you're a diabetic again, there's a problem. So you've got to be look got to look after yourself. Absolutely. And always perform these rituals when the sun is low or in the evenings. Because obviously heat will have an impact on you. Okay. Now, d during heat, what kind of things do they need to do? What kind of things do they need to prepare? I think the most important thing, as I said to you, is to keep away from, f uh, exactly. from, the, from say, the midday sun is one, one of the mm. important things. Having an umbrella would be not a bad idea. Mm. But the most important thing is carrying a lot of water. Because a lot of people do become dehydrated. And that can impact on any existing disease, such as chronic heart disease, kidney disease. Let me give you an example. If you've got a kidney stone, you might know it or you might not know it. And if you don't drink enough, that kidney stone is going to give you some grief. Mm -hmm. And you might be in hospital. So drinking water, carrying water is important. Keeping away from direct light is important. But at the same time, doing as much of your prayers that you want to do out of the sunlight, out of the heat is probably better. So, what about things like the sun cream or anything like that for yes, sure. protection? Yeah. There's no reason why you can't have that. I think that's an important point. High factor sun cream, we'd have to, you know, you'd have to take with you. That's one of. In fact, in the paper that I've written recently, and it's just mm -hmm. come out this week, as you know, in the BMJ, uh, it does say about the various things that you can take with you, and it is available online. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Yeah. And what do they have to do in order to get that? Is it just Google BMJ? Google BMJ, and or alternately, I mean, if they were to contact you, mm -hmm. then I can actually give you many, many copies of this particular article. Right. Um, then they can ring the downstairs reception. Absolutely, yeah, they sure, can sure. Do if I could just interrupt you on one no, thing, no, no, which is that uh, there is, uh, mosques have been sent by the Muslim Council of Britain yes. uh, um, a voucher, mm -hmm. which is very important for, uh, it's from the Muslim Council of Britain. Uh, when you go for a meningitis jab, they charge you a lot of money, depends on who you see, and you could, charge, you could be charged up to 90 to 100 pounds. Whereas with this, if the, if the GP is part of part of this uh, this setup, yeah. then they they do not charge you more than thirty five pounds. So and this is including the certificate. So these are available mm -hmm. in in all GP surgeries and all the participating uh, professionals. GP surgeries, tr uh, the travel agents, a lot of them have got this. And inside inside it, there is the uh, website which is www.mcb. Mm -hmm. dot vac sorry dash vac dot co dot uk or you could ring up oh eight four five five two one four one six zero so you know these are available much cheaper to do it better vaccine that you've got and uh, and you're well protected and there was something earlier that we were talking about mm. uh, professor sub uh, uh, before the show we had a discussion about the barbers roadside barbers and they're yes, yeah, something yeah. to watch out for tell us yeah sure that. because uh, you see uh, many years ago when i first went which was in 78 79 uh, you know they used to use these sort of blades across people's heads because one of the rituals after completing hajj is to have your head shaved and if these razor blades are used again and again on various people, there's a potential for hepatitis B and HIV. Mm. So we have actually, uh, over the years, and I wrote a paper in one of the journals uh, uh, alluding to that, and now the, you, have to be, you have to have special licenses to have your hair cut afterwards. Mm. So that is a safety thing, so do not use other people's razors whilst you're there, because you don't know where they've come from, you know, they might be from Malaysia, they might be from Africa, wherever they may be carrying, they may be coming for, for uh, uh, no fault of their own, they might be carrying HIV, mm. because there is an HIV belt in Africa, and remember, a lot of people come from Africa. And, and do they need to ask for a license before they get their hair, before they They need a license, uh, but there are still people around uh, on the roadside. Okay. And when I went last year, each family member, because it is, I mean, it costs you a few, few, few reals. So the family members do it on each other. I don't think there's anything against that. But at the mm -hmm. same time, you know, uh, I must, you must make sure that you don't reuse the razor, yes. really. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Now, a lot of people return from Hajj with minor conditions, such as a cough, cough as, as you mentioned. mentioned. Yeah, yeah. What are the symptoms we should look out for, and what should we do? And we've got a slide uh, as, as well uh, yes, prepared. Yes, yes. Um, uh, that slide uh, to death with our, within hours. Yeah, this, is, this, is, this slide actually is specifically for, for meningitis. Because if you have flu-like symptoms, and it's common to have flu-like symptoms, 
But if that goes on a little bit, you've got a headache, you know, you don't like the light, and your body is hurting, I think you should get the GP because that could be start off something nasty. Most of the time it could, might just be flu. But when it gets into the second stage, where you are then starting, you know, to get uh, little sp spots, you know, which we do the tumbler test in this country, then I think you are beginning to have big trouble. And when you reach the third stage, this is where people, or children certainly from my point of view, would see me. And, you know, within a golden hour or two, if I don't do something with them, then chances are I'll lose them. Mm. So that's one aspect of it. But anybody that becomes jaundiced, has severe diarrhea, particularly with blood in it, uh, vomiting excessively, uh, headache and, you know, not liking the light, as I mentioned to you. Mm -hmm. Those are the sort of symptoms where you want to go. When you say jaundice, what yeah. does it mean to Jaundice burn? is basically when they become yellow. When, when the skin color? When the skin color. Certainly okay. the eyes become yellow. Okay. And occasionally you might find that the urine goes very dark and mm -hmm. the toilet becomes quite pale as well. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's hepatitis. Uh, and there may be many reasons why you get this. Okay. Yeah. So anybody who has a fever for no good reason, diarrhea for no good reason, becomes yellow like we mentioned and all the symptoms other symptoms I've mentioned I think it's important to make sure they go to the GP mm. and and does it do they have to normally when they come immediately when they come back there's that cough there and nobody's worried about it sure uh, they sure. just carry on for about six weeks or so mm. roughly about how many weeks later should they have that examination well, well health check basically. most people will actually cough go to the GP and because it is bacteria or viruses that have come from other parts of the world, chances are that whatever you give is not going to work. If it's a bacterial infection, yes, I think it might just decrease the length of illness. But a lot of people for two or three weeks are going to cough anyway. But fortunately that cough gets better. But then you remember, if that cough continues, you might have got TB. Because then you might start losing weight, you might get fevers at night. That is a different story because you might get TB, mm. which is a different story, which, which will give you a cough. Mm, definitely. Now, uh, Professor Saab, I know that you speak a good word. Okay. So, we understand a little bit of our Urdu, which is our big brothers, and we can tell you a little bit about Hajj, and you can tell us about which steps we have to take for Hajj, when we are going to Hajj, if they have a disease, or if they have a disease, and we have to take the precautions to take them, just to summarize it for them. जी ठीक है बड़ी बड़ी चीज तो वो है कि जाने के पहले थोड़ी कुछ आप एक्सरसाइज करें तो आपको फायदा होगा जैसे कि आप जब उधर जाएंगे तो अल्लाह के घर आपको चलना पड़ेगा काफी उधर गाड़ियां तो बड़ी नहीं है टैक्सी भी नहीं है टैक्सीज तो है लेकिन वो जल्दी से नो जी नहीं जाएंगे जिधर जाने का है उधर एक वो चीज है दूसरी चीज है कि आपके जीपी के पास से आपको खत ले ले लेना कि ये ये दवाएं आप लेते हैं तीसरी चीज है कि आपको जो टिक्का लेना है वो बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है जो मैंने जो बात की मैंने जाती टिक्के की वो बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है उसके बिना आपको वीजा भी नहीं मिलेगी और वो जो दूसरे जो टिक्के हैं टाइफॉइड के हैं और और हेपेटाइटिस के हैं वो जो लेना है वो नहीं लेना है वो आपकी मर्जी है लेकिन जब आप जो अफ्रीका जा रहे हैं या इंडिया जा रहे हैं जो जिस जगह पर मलेरिया है तो मलेरिया की कुछ आपने आपके आपको दवाई लेनी पड़ेगी उसकी दवाई है टिक्के नहीं है अच्छा तो वो प्रिपरेशन जाने के पहले उधर जाते हैं तब धूप से बाहर रहना पानी हर रोज आपके साथ ही लेनी आप जो डायबिटिक हैं तो आपकी जो रूटीन है बन सके जितना आप रूटीन में रखो आपको आपके साथ कोई न कोई होना चाहिए क्योंकि कभी जो आपकी शुगर कम हो जाती है तो पॉसिबिलिटी है कि आप आप थोड़ा कुछ कन्फ्यूज हो जाएंगे पता नहीं होगा किधर है आप धूप के अंदर तो ऐसा होता भी है कभी डायबिटीज़ के बिना डायबिटीज़ है तो आपकी आपकी आपके जो पाँव जो है उसकी आपकी देखभाल करनी पड़ेगी क्योंकि पाँव में जो इन्फेक्शन हुआ तो ऐसा भी होता है कि जब आते हैं तब उन्हें उनके पाँव कटाना भी पड़े पड़ता है जो इन्फेक्शन हुआ है तो उधर है तो वही चीज़ करनी है जो मैंने बात की आपसे फिर जब आते हैं तब आपको जो फीवर हुआ या आपको बड़ी टट्टियाँ जो हुई या आपके आपके पेशाब में खून निकले या आपको पीलिया हुआ तो ये जो चीज़ें हैं ना तो आपको डॉक्टर को आपको जाना पड़ेगा देखने के लिए और ये जो हमने मैंने बात की जो मैंने जाए चीज़ की टिके की वो वो अपनी काफ़ी मस्जिदें में मुस्लिम काउंसिल ऑफ ब्रिटेन ने ये भेजी है तो आप ये मैंने जो वेबसाइट आपको दी ना तो वो वेबसाइट पे आपका जो आप पोस्ट कोड डाल देंगे तो 
تو آپ کو بتائیں گے کہ کس کلینک آپ کے نزدیک ہے جس سے آپ یہ ٹیکہ لے سکیں گے اور آپ کا جی پی ہے وہ جو ان کا کانٹریکٹ ہے وہ آپ کو پینتیس پاؤنڈ کے کے اوپر آپ کو وہ چارج نہیں کر سکتا ہے اور سرٹیفکیٹ بھی آپ کو ملے گی تھینک یو ویری مچ پروفیسر رشید اف دیر واز ون میسج دیٹ یو ووڈ لائک ٹو گیو ایٹ ٹو دا ویورز اینڈ دا لسنرز واٹ ووڈ دیٹ میسج بی آئی تھنک دیٹ میسج مسٹ بی فزیکلی یو شوڈ بی پریپیئرڈ اینڈ میک شیور دیٹ یو ٹیک یور ویکسینیشن ایٹ لیسٹ ٹین ٹو ففٹین ڈیز بیفور اینڈ دیٹ از مین انجائٹ از ویکسینیشن اینڈ لک آف ٹو یور سیلف فرام دا پوائنٹ آف ویو آف میکنگ شیور دیٹ یو کیچ یور انفیکشن آئی ای کیچ اٹ اینڈ دین بین اٹ like we did in the swine flu outbreak Absolutely. because that is important because breathing because look, huge crowds and the respiratory diseases which is from basically breathing and coughing very rife there mm. thank you very much professor sir for coming on to community time and to take a time from your very busy schedule to be here live in the studios thank you thank you very much for inviting me now um first of all let me just give you a number um of the leaflet that uh, Professor Saab has mentioned is called Travelling for Hajj or Umrah. Uh, the website is www.mcb-vac.org.uk or the telephone number is 084-55-214-160. Um, and we will join you after a short commercial break and we'll be talking about the practicalities and how to make the travel arrangements for Hajj. Community time.